So now in this next video and flowchart, we're going to look deeper at the brain by specifically looking at a very important part of the brain known as the cerebrum. And we'll entitle this next flowchart, Cerebrum 1. And so here, what we're going to focus on is understanding the functions of the cerebrum and how the cerebrum is divided. So let's begin by looking at the broad understanding of how the cerebrum functions. What does it do? The cerebrum is going to be very important in the following. It controls skeletal muscle contractions. Skeletal muscle contractions. And also, the cerebrum will be important in the overall completion of voluntary movement. So plus voluntary movement. So these two both go hand in hand. If you want skeletal muscle contraction, you will honestly also get voluntary movements. But in addition to this, the cerebrum is also going to be the center, the main area for learning, which is a big, big thing that we all try to do all the time, hopefully. Also memory, also emotion, and also perception. Those are four things that are clearly higher order thinking. This is very much higher order stuff that goes on in this cerebrum, and therefore it is one of the defining characteristics of organisms that are complex, of organisms that undergo very complex lifestyles or follow very complex lifestyles. Those that involve learning, memory, emotion, and perception in great deals. So those are the basic functions of the cerebrum. Let's take a look at how the cerebrum is differentiated, how it's divided. It's divided into different parts, so we'll write that down here. The cerebrum is divided into different parts. So the basic way to understand how the cerebrum is divided to, is to first recognize that the cerebrum is divided into a right and also left hemisphere. So there are right and left hemispheres that portion out the cerebrum. And what we notice about this orientation is kind of interesting actually. What we see here is that the left side, the left part of the cerebrum, actually perceives, remember it's involved in perception, it perceives info from and also controls movement of the right side of the body. Right side of body. And also vice versa. So we, we also notice is that the right side of the cerebrum is going to perceive information from and control movement of the left side of the body. So this is kind of a, an opposite orientation that we see. The right part of your brain is going to control the left side of your body. The left part of your brain is going to control the right side of your body. The right part of your brain is going to perceive things from the left, and your r left side of your brain is going to perceive environmental stimulus that comes to the right side of your body. So it's sort of that opposite orientation here. In addition, the cerebrum, if you take a look at the inner portion of the cerebrum, the interior, the cerebrum is a part of the brain. And the brain, again, is surrounded by gray matter. But on its interior, in its inner portion, what you notice is white matter. And that's what's seen in the inner portion of the cerebrum. Therefore, that white matter will be myelinated. And it makes sense to myelinate the inside of the cerebrum because that's where we're going to have learning, memory, emotion, perception, voluntary movements, all of this is going to happen here. So you want it to happen efficiently and correctly and swiftly. And it makes sense to myelinate that portion of the brain then. Now the outer portion of the cerebrum, which we'll do over here, that outer portion is gray matter. Much like the rest of the brain, the outside of it is gray matter. Therefore, this is going to be the portion that is unmyelinated. No myelin here. This will continue, this will sort of subdivide itself into what we would consider the cerebral cortex. 
and the cortex, whenever you look at the cortex of anything that you're studying in anatomy, that just means the outside. So the outer portion of the cerebrum is more commonly referred to as the cerebral cortex, and this will contain uh, many convolutions, many infoldings, and also fissures, which can be seen if you look at the figure in your book of the brain structure. So there's going to be many convolutions and fissures. These are just sort of um, hills and valleys, I like to think of it, within the brain. If you just think of a brain, a real brain in your mind, you can understand how we have these sort of weird sort of twists and turns and like um, ups and downs within the outside portion of the brain. You see it's all wiggly sort of. That's the idea that the cerebral cortex has these convolutions and fissures within it. And finally, the last thing we want to understand here is that the right and left side, the right and left hemispheres, are going to be connected via a structure called the corpus callosum. So they're connected via the corpus callosum. And this structure is going to basically be a band of axons. It's going to be a lot of axons, a lot of them wrapped together that allow and the purpose to connect the right and left hemispheres is the following. Those axons are going to allow communication between the right and left side. Communication between the right slash left cerebral cortices. So there's going to be a right cortex and a left cortex. Both of them, the plural is cortices. They're going to communicate with each other by traversing these axons, traveling on these axons called the corpus callosum in order to communicate with each other if necessary. So that's our basic understanding of the cerebrum structure and overall function. What we're going to be doing in the next flowchart is understanding the cerebral cortex in a little bit more detail. This is where the majority of stuff is going to basically be controlled, as we'll see. And in order to understand that, we'll look at the next flowchart and the next idea as we continue to look at the cerebrum.